The Witch's Broom Disease by Brianna Merrimag, Alexis Rosia, and Christopher Nguyen. What does a plant with the witch's broom disease look like? Plants with the witch's broom disease generally have twigs or branches growing from a central point, a ball-shaped dwarf plant growing from the tree, and an unusual dense cluster of foliage or needle growth. This disease is given the name the witch's broom disease because of its resemblance to brooms and because witches were the ones to blame for anything abnormal back in the day. However, this disease isn't caused by witchcraft. In fact, they are caused by numerous things like fungi, phytoplasmas, bacteria, viruses, pests, and parasitic plants. These organisms attack the apical bud, which may also be called the shoot apical meristem, and is responsible for producing auxin and the process called apical dominance. Apical dominance is a phenomenon where the main central stem of the plant grows more strongly than other side stems known as the lateral stems by inhibiting their growth. This is done through auxin. In this figure, you can see the role the apical bud plays in the growth of this plant. With the apical bud, the lateral stems are short with few leaves, while the plant without the apical bud has lateral stems that are longer and have more leaves, leaving a bushier appearance. Predating organisms hurt the apical bud and prevent it from doing its job, causing a hormonal imbalance of auxin and an additional hormone called cytokinin. Cytokinin promotes cell division in plant shoots. It is produced in the root apical meristems and catches a ride with water up the stem through the xylem to reach its destination. Auxin also promotes cell division and elongation and is present at the apical bud where its concentration is the highest. These two hormones work together to determine the orientation of the plant. If the concentration of both hormones is equal, then normal cell division takes place. If there is more auxin than cytokinin, then roots form. If there is more cytokinin than auxin, then shoots will form. If there is a disturbance of growth from the removal of the apical bud, then there will no longer be any production of auxin and the concentration of cytokinin builds up. This signals a plant to build many secondary shoots and grow uncontrollably and in every direction, creating the infamous witch's broom. Welcome to Cartoon Corner. I will be explaining to you the mechanistic process of witch's broom in bamboo. As Brianna mentioned, auxin is a key player in the production of witch's broom, especially in bamboo. In bamboo, fungi can affect the levels of auxin. In one study, Researchers showed how both A. Take and H. Sase, both members of the Clavicepticeae family, can cause a disruption of the auxin levels. A. Take will increase the auxin levels by having endophytic hyphae in the meristematic tissue at the shoot apical meristem. This will cause there to be continuous initiation of the primordia at the shoot apex. However, there will not be enough auxin to alter the leaves and stems of the plant. This constant initiation at the primordia will promote the broom-like morphology of the plant. H. sase, on the other hand, will cause growths of stroma that do not allow for growth at the shoot apex. As Brianna mentioned, apical dominance is important in the development of plants. When H. sase is involved, there will be a release of apical dominance and more lateral buds will grow. This is repeated many times, which is broom will occur. The process in soybeans differs from that of bamboo. By looking at transcriptomic data, researchers were able to look into the expression of different genes related to the distortion of the flower buds in soybeans that have been affected by witch's broom disease. Phytoplasmas have been seen to cause witch's broom in soybeans. They will be found intracellularly in the plant and will use the protein machinery of the soybean to thrive and infect the plants. Phytoplasmas will cause the plant to suppress the salicylic acid pathway. SAP11 genes are also important in the expression of these phytoplasmas. When SAP11 genes are upregulated, they will affect the flower development by encoding for phytoplasma protein effectors. These will lead to more phytoplasmas, which will also suppress salicylic acid pathway. The alteration of development will lead to the witch's broom morphology. Interestingly, both of these changes allow for wider spread of the phytoplasmas through the plant and cause further infection. 
There has even been research showing that the phytoplasmas will change the leaf shape to promote further spread of witch's broom disease. The hormonal imbalance of auxin that has previously been discussed also affects the soybean plants and will cause the plant to have improper translocation of amino acids as well as carbohydrates. These changes will lead to more leafy parts being produced and display the classic witch's broom morphology. Hello, my name is Christopher Witt, and I'll be teaching you about the biological significance of the witch's broom disease. To clarify, the witch's broom is a symptom of another underlying illness. So like how sneezing can just be a sign of seasonal allergy, or if you look through WebMD, it can be a sign of like cancer. And depending on the plant species and vector of infection, a witch's broom can either be benign, like in trees, Beto in roses or unusable for agricultural purposes like in cacao. To start, we'll be talking about the dwarf mistletoe, which you can see in the images next to it. Where it's a type of parasitic plant where the seed will attach itself to a tree branch and absorb all the nutrients and water from the vascular system of the host. It will continue to grow for about three to four years until it can sprout out a new seed, which will shoot out and attach to yet another tree branch. Generally, they are harmless to trees, except in serious cases where an abundance of dwarf mistletoe will absorb too much nutrients. Next, we'll be talking about the rose rosette disease, or RRD for short. So as you can see in the image, there is a healthy rose on top and an infected rose on the bottom. So in RRD, the, it causes the leaves of the rose to redden and cause the flower buds to cluster up, forming a witch's room. So back in the 1930s, the U.S. government had trouble with erosion. So they thought about importing Japanese multiflora rose to combat it. However, the Japanese multiflora rose has a high propagation rate, so it was becoming an invasive species competing with the native plant populations. The government realized their mistake, thought about introducing RRD to the multiflora rose. The RRD is a type of virus that's transmitted by mites. It was highly infectious and fatal to the multiflora rose, and so far there was no problem with that, except the RRD was eventually able to infect cultivated roses, so it was causing an epidemic within the rose industry. So the government, once realizing their mistake again, tried to find a treatment for RRD. So far, there is no treatment for RRD besides getting rid of the rose entirely before it can infect other neighboring roses. And lastly, we'll be talking about the Monilio Sephora Paniciosa, otherwise known as the witch's broom disease of cacao. So this is a type of fungus that's found within Latin America, as you can see on the map. And symptoms of the fungal disease include proliferation of axillary buds, hence a witch's broom necrotic leaf, as you see in the image next to it, pod lesion, which will kill the seed inside it, and eventually death. So, on average, the 30% of crop yields are lost to the fungal disease. And if no cultural control is implied, about 90% of the crop yields will be lost. So, essentially, that's like saying about 30% of chocolate will never be produced at all. So, in the end, the witch's broom disease is a peculiar illness. It may not always be fatal to plants, but it should always be a cause of concern for scientists and planters everywhere. And on this slide, it's our work cited page. And if you have any more questions, feel free to ask me or any of my other teammates about the witch's broom disease. So that is the end of our presentation. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.